Hello and welcome to Cyber Ops Unmasked. My name is Keith Hales. I'm the CEO of InfoSystems, and we are relaunching our cybersecurity podcast. So thanks for joining us with this uh, this new but uh, relaunched uh, cybersecurity podcast. So a little bit about InfoSystems, if it's been a while or maybe you don't know, InfoSystems has been in business for almost 30 years now. We're headquartered in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, we have been doing... Um, we have been doing IT solutions for over 30 or almost 30 years, and uh, we've been mostly working on networks and infrastructure, things of that nature for that whole time. About five or six years ago, though, we launched a cybersecurity practice. And so the purpose of this podcast is to uh, help educate those in our community who may want to know more about cybersecurity, and maybe even we could find ways to partner with these businesses in the future. If nothing else, though, we just want to be a resource for those um, who might need more education or just want to learn more, whether they're in the business world, they're in cybersecurity, they're in IT in general, or this is just a topic they they want to learn more about. So uh, we hope that this podcast series is helpful. And uh, actually, we, we welcome feedback too. So if you want to reach out to us on topics that are interesting to you, please let us know and we'll try to work those in. So diving into the topic today, we're going to be talking about cybersecurity standards and why you do need cybersecurity standards inside your business. So joining us today is Robert Goodwin, our CTO. Robert, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Keith. Good to be here. Yeah. So as it comes to standards, on the topic of standards around cybersecurity, uh, help me understand, why would a company need standards specific to cybersecurity? Well, a company needs to have standards around cybersecurity because you want to make sure that you're protecting your data and your, your end users. And if you, if you don't have policies or, or procedures in place, or if, even if you, you may have compliance needs, right? If you're in a, a specific industry like banking or, or manufacturing, uh, if you don't have those standards, it's very hard to, to follow any kind of guidance, right? Because you have uh, multiple frameworks that you can follow. Okay. Right? So so what are some examples of an IT security standard? Like what, how would how would a company uh, know whether or not they even have them? Uh, so there's, as I mentioned before, there's some frameworks. There's also some, some individual key elements that you would have or, or know that you had. Some of the frameworks would be like the NIST 800 standards. Uh, you have the, the HIPAA standard for the, the medical industry. You have PCI DSS uh, for the payment card mm -hmm. industry. Um, it, it, frameworks like that. So if, if you already have that, you're probably going to know that, right? Because there's usually governance and compliance that goes with these things. Um, another way of knowing whether you have some standards or not, don't have standards are things like, do you have MFA? All right, multi-factor authentication across your organization. Uh, do you have a, a spam filter in place? Do you have other antivirus, you know, some some other products or, or items that would help, protect, again, protect the end user data and the end user's workstation? Okay. So um, <clears throat> you mentioned HIPAA. You mentioned NIST standards. Yep. You mentioned PCI standards. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot. There's um, ISO standards. I I, you have ISO, uh, what's it, 27001 yep. is one of them. Uh, you also have FINRA. Yep. That's also a standard. So so how would a company know which standard to pick or should companies try to implement all these standards? Oh, no, no, the company doesn't need to implement all of them because it, one, it would be vastly too expensive and, and time consuming to do. You also want to take uh, something that's in line with your industry. Again, uh, payment card industry, like if you're in the, you know, retail, uh, you have to take a customer's credit card. Your PC, PCI DSS is more going to align with you and you may not need to do a HIPAA right, framework, because you're not dealing with medical or patient information. Uh, again, in the medical industry, you're, you do need to do the HIPAA framework. You know, if you're in manufacturing, the uh, the ISO 27001 is one that you could obtain to, to help provide guidance in that industry. All right. So an unprepared question I'm going to ask you here. So um, as far as all these different standards go, do companies... Uh, off, do they do they fall into this these standards whether or not they know it? I'm thinking like personal identifiable information. Maybe mm -hmm. a reason that they need to implement these standards, even if they think that their industry doesn't require them to. So a lot of companies may not even realize they need to have a standard. Uh, you mentioned the, the PII, right? Mm -hmm. Personal identifiable information that also kind of rolls up under GDPR, yet yeah. another framework. Uh, having a company realize that they need this is really the key element. Right? So a lot of times. A company may stumble across it by accident. Somebody raises an issue up and, and you start diving into the regulation and compliance needs around that and you realize, oh, we do need this framework or we need to find this framework. So once you identify 
then you can actually go out and try to figure out which one belongs to what you need. And it may not even be industry specific. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're industry specific for maybe banks or maybe um, uh, financial institutions. I'm sure for healthcare, there's some, you oh, mentioned yeah. retail for the PCI, but it's my understanding that anybody that, that captures information like employee, first name, last name, address, social security numbers, that type of information, then they have some risk around that uh, that information and they need to implement at least some minimum security standards to protect that or else that company's putting themselves at risk. Absolutely. And liability. Yeah. I mean, even a company like InfoSystems, right? Because we do track and, and have information on our employees. We have to follow a standard, yeah, the PII mm-hmm. standard, uh, because we, we don't want to expose our employee information or we don't want to risk the exposure, right? If, if a bad actor tries to get in, those kind of things. All right. So what would a company need to do to get started? Let's say they're listening to this today and they've realized that, hey, we don't have a set of security standards. Where would they go first? How would they get on that road? Really, the first thing that that I would suggest that they do is try to review any policies or procedures they have today. Right. Go back to your policy manuals and look through those. Are there anything that offers guidance or does it look like you have some kind of we're we're almost adhering to some policy or to some frameworks, you know, and, and then you may not. If you don't discover anything, the next thing is really you, you'd need to do a gap analysis or, or, or some type of risk analysis to see. Because when you do something like that, it's going to bring forth a lot of this information and it will point you in the right direction. You know, th- these are services that InfoSystems does provide. We do some of these compliance and, and risk analysis right, so that we can help companies that need these frameworks to identify what they need to know or what they, sorry, what they don't need to know, but what they, which framework they need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so a gap analysis isn't necessarily fixing the problem, Correct. but it's identifying the problem. So helping a company identify where they have risk and liability, right. which standards they should be trying to implement, and then identifying what they need to do versus their current state. Correct. So that they at least have a path. And then whether they partner with an outside party to, to do all the remediation work or they do it themselves, that's really up to them. It is. It's completely up to them whether they want to take on the challenge. And it, it can be daunting at times. Uh, because it, it, especially some of these larger frameworks, it's not just 10 items. It's hundreds of items that you have to work through and, and check off and make sure you're good to go. All right. So, so this is something that we see in our, our industry um, is companies will identify that maybe they have a PCI you know, compliance need or HIPAA need or maybe multiple compliance requirements and frameworks they're trying to meet. So they, they write the, the report, they figure out what the frameworks are going to be and the policies and procedures. And then they put them on the shelf. So how is a company supposed to keep these things current and be sure that they're actually implementing the standards that they've written for themselves and taking the time to go through? But actually, how can they be sure? Is that an audit process? Is it an ongoing evaluation? Do these do these uh, frameworks ever change? They do change. Actually, they change quite often. Uh, so really, the easiest thing to do for a company is to create a standards committee. right? And, and part of that standards committee is to ensure that what they have today matches what they need to have today. And uh, this committee would also, if, if there's a new compliance need or a new security need, they would add that in and that becomes a new standard. And then they put forth things to uh, audits, as you mentioned, are a great way to, are we doing what we said we're going to do in our policies? Are we, are we matching what the compliant need is? Uh, the standards committee is the best way to drive all that. So, can they audit it themselves or is there ability for them to partner with an outside party to audit whether or not they're actually following these standards? Yes. <laughs> really, <laughs> right. And what I mean by that is uh, a lot of times you want to do a self audit and, and we, in, in our industry, we call that a readiness assessment, right? So it kind of that self, Hey, are we doing, are we checking, but really to make sure you're doing all the things because you can't prove your own work mm-hmm. right? is, is best to have an outside firm come in and do an actual audit and do a review and that way you can get a, a, a nice report uh, things like we provide to our customers is we've gone in and we give you a, an actionable report here's the items here's the things that you need to, to close out or you've done good here here and here but focus in this area here yeah so info systems at info systems we are uh, SOC 2 type 2 so SOC is security and operations controls, controls. yes um, which is actually our audit is produced by a CPA firm that is correct which then hands us that report that then we're able to hand to our customers, but we also can partner with CPA firms and provide that same SOC 
report to our customers as well. In fact, I know we do that as for some of our customers today. We do. It's, that's why I use the term readiness, right? Mm-hmm. Because while we cannot write the attestation letter, but we can go through the actions and help them prepare for that SOC 2 type report. Yeah. So um, on this, on specifically cybersecurity standards, I guess I want to go back to kind of the topic of, you know, the reason that we ha- that we have all these things is because I think we all know how dangerous of a world it is right now from a cybersecurity perspective uh, that we're aware of companies constantly being either ransomed or attacked in some way. And unfortunately, um, a lot of them make the news, but you and I both know a lot of the ones don't make the news. In fact, I would say uh, we have the have had the unfortunate opportunity to work with a number of, of companies here in town that have been attacked in some way. And I don't think maybe one of those made the local news. Um, the rest of them were all kept quiet. So, so the the whole goal and purpose behind these standards is to is to what prevent the attacks? Is it to mitigate uh, the the harm they cause? Like, what's the purpose behind these standards? So, following the standards, it's really again readiness. It's it's you're preparing yourself and, and the company to be as prepared for the attack as you can. Is it you're not going to guarantee a stop, right? We, nobody today can guarantee absolutely you're not going to get in because if the guys want to get in, they're going to get in. But you can mitigate your risk and exposure by following compliance and, and these regulations, right? And, and the, the frameworks, because it prepares your company to, you know where your data lives, you know where it's at, who has access to it, all these kind of key features. So it's very, it's easier to identify a threat that has happened because you now see something that's abnormal mm-hmm. versus in, if you don't have a standard, I don't know if Keith was supposed to access that file or not. Well, if I have my standards in place, Keith's not supposed to access this file, flag that, you need to go check it out. Right. Well, and then also they can, if there's standards in place, they know what the next step is, as opposed to kind of every right. call in a meeting, if figuring out on the fly right. while the attack is ongoing, what right. the next step is, as opposed to having a standard that says, if thing if ha- if A happens, then we're going to take steps B and C. Correct. Um, so that's always very helpful. Well, with that, we're going to wrap up our uh, cybersecurity standards conversation. But we have, uh, I think the next one we're going to be doing is on uh, specifically on that topic around backup best practices as it relates to cybersecurity. So uh, Robert's going to be joining us for that as well. So thank you for joining us for the podcast today. We hope you enjoyed it and hope you join us for the next one.